Hey, welcome back. It's DIY Dad standing out in my garage, which is supposed to be nice and warm and heated, but obviously is not currently. And the reason it's not is because that heater stopped working. Uh, essentially, it was running, the fan was going, but no warm air coming out of it at all. I've troubleshot this problem before. I know why it's doing it. Uh, it's a part that is prone to fail in these cheaper Big Macs style heaters that you get from like home improvement stores around that three to four hundred dollar range. It's a very easy part to fix if you know what's going on. So I'm going to show you how to replace it and how to check to see if this is the problem. And if this is your problem, how to temporarily fix it while you're waiting for the new part to get here. So that's our project for today. So this is my furnace. This is a typical forced air garage style heater. Uh, this one's a Big Max 80,000 BTU unit, um, just regular natural gas. And it runs on a pretty simple premise. Inside of this piece of metal, you've got a couple different burners. And these shoot flame into these tubes, which heats these up. And then a fan on the back blows air across the tubes and pushes hot air out into the room. Now there's a couple safety features and these are pretty simply built. I'll actually take the cover off so you can see on the inside here. There's three main temperature sensors in a furnace like this, or at least in this style. There are two rollback sensors and then there's one high limit sensor. So the rollout sensors, those are things that are going to check to see, uh, are going to look for heat showing up here. Essentially the way that would happen is if your exhaust for the entire system is blocked, and air is pushing its way back in, it can cause the flame, instead of shooting into these tubes, to roll out into the cabinet. That's a very bad situation. It'll cause these sensors to trip, and then the whole unit shuts down. Those temperature sensors have a little reset button on them so that you can reset them manually to get the thing started, uh, but you probably shouldn't because that's a pretty bad scenario. The other type of sensor that you're going to see in these is a high limit sensor, and that's that guy sticking out of the sidewall right there. What that measures is the temperature roughly in the middle of this unit, and it's looking for um, an abundance of heat, let's say. So in a garage like this, my ceiling is insulated, my walls are not yet. So when it's very cold, this furnace has to work very, very hard. And this unit can get very warm because of that. When that high temperature is exceeded, then this essentially cuts power to the unit and forces everything to shut down until it cools down. Once temperature then drops back into a specific kind of safety range, it reconnects everything, the furnace will start back up, and life is good. Uh, what happens, however, over time is these little sensors wear out, and then they'll trip and get stuck, and they'll never reset back. So your system will be in kind of a waiting state. Your fan will be running, everything will going, but the igniters will not start because that sensor is telling them it's still too hot in there, even though it's 20 degrees in your garage. So we're going to replace that sensor. Uh, it mounts from the back on this side and sticks out into the unit. This is a stock type sensor. Um, so I'll show you what that looks like. But first we'll take this cover off and get a look inside. On these uh, Mr. Heater or Big Max style uh, units, there's a access panel on the side. It's going to have two screws right here and here, as well as two down on the other side that you can see down there. So four screws in total that you have to take off. I usually pull the back two first, and then this lower one, and then I'll hold on to the panel with my hand and pull this top guy out, and that allows the whole panel to come off. And in this case, it'll get set right on top of that bin. And then we can get to take a look on the inside. So for purposes of this video, I kind of skipped a step here and that was how this problem was diagnosed. Because so I've already gone through this and I already know what the issue is. Um, on the control panel here, there's this little green LED that sticks out and that's going to flash an error code. In my case, it was four long flashes, which indicated it was either the rollout sensors or the uh, high temp or high limit sensor. The rollout sensors are going to be mounted on the back wall. Oh, if I can get an angle. It's that guy right back. Yeah, it's really tight in here, but it's this guy right here. And there's a button on the inside that you can press, and you'll hear it click if that's your issue. There's going to be another one, in my case, 
Uh, it's hard to see, but it's where those two brown wires connect to on the back. And those are measuring for temperature uh, right there. You can see the little pin sticking out. So for it to get a heat spike there, it means that flame is coming out of this tube. And instead of going in like it's supposed to, it's ballooning out into this area and it's hitting that sensor, which again, is a very bad situation that you're going to want to get addressed professionally. The high temp sensor, or high limit sensor is this guy right here. So there's just two screws on it and these two wires. So all we're gonna do is pull the wires, pop the screws. This thing is then gonna come straight out uh, this way. And then we can just put the new one in place. And I'll show you how you can troubleshoot or at least kind of temporarily get these running as well uh, if this is your problem. So this is the high limit sensor that we're going to uh, replace. It's a pretty simple device. You can kind of imagine what happens here. The power runs through. Um, this is just a simple switch basically that is run by temperature. And it has a certain uh, setting where at 80 degrees Celsius, it'll flip and it will stay flipped until it falls below the lower setting. Now, if this is your problem and you're waiting on a replacement part, you can sometimes get these uh, to go back and reconnect by uh, essentially flicking your finger against the top of this. There's, for lack of a better way of explaining it, kind of a spring on the inside that wears out and you can give it just a, a quick wrap or a quick tap on the top, just like that. A little bit harder than that, obviously, if you had use of both hands. Uh, that'll cause it to essentially drop back into its cold mode and then you can plug it back in and it will work again. Uh, the trick though is once this has started to fail, it will fail again. Um, I got about four days out of it after doing that uh, to the situation we're in right now. So I have a new one of these. We're going to get that installed. It just goes in through the sidewall, wires get reconnected, then everything can get turned back on. I should mention, because I didn't say it before, before you do any work, on a device like this, please make sure that you've cut the power. I actually have a switch in place that shuts all the power off to the unit. Uh, so it is in its power down mode. Don't be playing around with wires or working on the inside if you still have electricity running to this. All right, our sensor is replaced. Our new one rather is in place and power is restored and glorious heat is once again flowing out of the furnace. So you kind of see what I was talking about with that rollout sensor. You can see how the flame coming out of each of these burners is shooting straight down the tubes. If it was more uh, kind of bubbling out this way and getting into this box, that's a much bigger problem that you need to deal with. Uh, this little sensor, however, is just something that is prone to fail. This is a $4 part, if you can find it, for my model. Um, looking at this two weeks ago, I found a whole lot of places that were back ordered, and I found one place that had one, for like $45 and I paid the extra amount and right now today I'm glad that I did. Uh, I would suggest if you have a garage heater like this, it wouldn't be a bad idea to get a high limit uh, switch or a high limit sensor uh, and just get that in place and have it in your little bag of tricks because from everything I'm reading online, that is the thing that fails the most often and it's a super easy thing to repair. That's gonna wrap us up from the garage today. I'm gonna to let this keep running to warm up in here because I am freezing. So I'm going back inside as well. Uh, but I do owe you a dad joke before I do. So what do you call a garage that is just big enough to hold a single car? A vroom closet. All right, you guys, have a good day. Uh, remember, any DIY project doesn't have to be perfect. Most important step is just to do it. Take care, we'll see you next time.